Good morning. Well, that was like five people. There's like 150 people here, right? Good morning. We're going to praise the Lord here in this house this morning. I'm going to welcome you to St. Matthew. Let's rise this morning. Let's sing Holy Spirit. Open your hearts and minds to worship today. Please be seated. 
Welcome to St. Matthew on this Confirmation Sunday, Ascension Sunday. We celebrate that gift of Ascension. So we're still doing the Choose Hope Project for those of you that can contribute to that. It would be great. You can read more about that out in the narthex. And also out there are the written statements, faith statements of our confirmands. Take some time after the service to read those. We are having a fundraiser at Vagabond on Tuesday. If you like to go eat lunch or dinner, if you could go there, there's an Eagle Scout that's working on our project, William Keene. And if you go there and mention that you're there on behalf of the Eagle Project, they're going to donate 20% of what they received. And so please think about going out to lunch on Tuesday to support that. Also, we'll be having um, a voters meeting and a town hall before that on Tuesday, May 30th. So not this Tuesday, but the following one. And there are store, still a couple of positions on the Board of Ministry open if you're interested in that. And um, we also will be having a cookout after that. So join us for that celebration on the second Sunday in June. Let us stand and begin our worship service. Let us make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia! Christ is risen and ascended. Christ is risen and ascended indeed. Alleluia! Today is a day of celebration and anticipation. We celebrate our Lord's triumph and we anticipate the coming of the promised Holy Spirit on Pentecost. And we rejoice in the promise of Holy Though Christ is ascended on high, ruling and reigning over all creation, we live as though we rule and reign our own lives. Build, but our Heavenly Father invites us to return to Him, confess our sins, and receive His forgiveness. Let us pause to reflect in a moment of silence. Heavenly Father, we confess to you that we are sinful and unclean. We have placed our trust and hope in the people and things of this world rather than the goodness of our Sovereign Lord. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so we may walk in your perfect way and delight in your perfect will. In the joy of his resurrection and ascension, we receive forgiveness, mercy, and grace. Your sins have been paid for by Christ. They are forgiven. Amen. Alleluia! Christ is risen and ascended. Christ is risen and ascended indeed. Alleluia. Let's share the greeting of peace with one another.
Risen and ascended Lord, enlighten our hearts that we may know the hope to which you have called us, center our faith in you, and strengthen us for what lies ahead as we await the promise of a better future in our eternal home, where you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated as we hear now the word of the Lord. Our first reading is from the book of Acts, the first chapter, verses 1 through 11. These are the new promise readings. My former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself to them, gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, do not leave Jerusalem but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power and the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come back the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Our second reading is from the book of Ephesians, the first chapter. Ever since I first heard of your strong faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for God's people everywhere, I have not stopped thanking God for you. I pray for you constantly, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. 
I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope of to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people, and his incomparably great power for us who believe. This is the same mighty power that raised Jesus from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Now he is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church. And the church is his body. It is made full and complete by Christ, who fills all things everywhere with him. This is the word of the Lord. Oh. 
The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. He said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scripture. He told them, this is what is written, the Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, be given at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I am going to send you what my Father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with the power from on high. When he had led them out of the vicinity of Bethany, he lifted up his hands and blessed them. And while he was blessing them, he left them and was taken into heaven. Then they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they stayed continually at the temple, praising God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Make my beginning in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, today is Confirmation Day, and it's very appropriate for us to do Confirmation Day on Ascension Day. These young men and young women have spent three years... In confirmation, I don't know how many of you that have been confirmed spent three years. They've spent three years in confirmation. And their hearts and minds have been open. They've been open to the knowledge of who God is. That's the question, right? So who is God? In case you didn't hear them, they said the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. They've learned about who God the Father is, who Jesus is, and who the Holy Spirit is. They've learned about the fact that God loves them. That God longs to be in a relationship with them, with each of us. That's why we were created. And about that greatest gift of God. The gift of the cross of his death on the cross and his resurrection. And so if you look at our gospel lesson today, Jesus is there with his apostles and other disciples, and they had been with him for three years. And he had opened their understanding to Scripture, to the law of Moses, to the Psalms, to the prophets. He had let them know that God loves them. He had let them know that God wanted to be in relationship with them. He had let them know that he was going to Jerusalem, that he was going to suffer and die on the cross and rise again, and that they would have forgiveness of sins, that there would be repentance and forgiveness of sins, and they would have everlasting life. And so now your three years comes to an end. Aren't you sad? I don't see any tears. Smiles, not tears. So what are they to do now? Well, Jesus said in our gospel reading, in verse 48, that you are to be witnesses witnesses to what occurred. To the apostles that were there at the time, they had seen Jesus' life. They had seen how he had loved, how he had healed, how he had forgiven sins. They had seen his resurrected body with the nail holes and the spear hole. 
And they were to be witnesses of that and go tell people, you are witnesses through Scripture. The Holy Spirit opening up your hearts and minds. You are called, all of you are called to be witnesses of who Christ is. Witnesses of God's love for others. Now, it can be scary to be a witness. These young men and women are going to stand up and read their faith statements, and they were scared. They were scared about that. But they know that you all love them, and they're in a safe place. And they do a great job. I've heard them already. And they'll speak them wonderfully. Like I said, take time to read them out there. But it can be scary being a witness. We are witnesses in what we do and what we say. And so they're ending their middle school careers and they're going on to high school and they're going to be surrounded with a bunch of fellow students who don't know much about Jesus at all or the church at all. All they know is maybe what's they've seen on TV and maybe even sometimes the fun of it but you're to be different you're to be a witness you're to show the love of God to that person that someone else is making fun of or if you're in the cafeteria go sit with the person who's all alone you're to be different we're all to be different we're called to be witnesses but the interesting thing is that word for witness in verse 48 of our scripture reading today, in the Greek is marktos. And it means that you're to be a martyr, not just a witness. You see, a witness will give testimony, but you're to be more than that. You're supposed to be willing, all of us are supposed to be willing to suffer for our faith, even to the point of death. And so, by confirming your faith and saying, yes, you believe, you're declaring that you will be a witness, that you will be a martyr. Sometimes being out there and putting others before yourself, loving others more, is hard. It'll be painful. Being a martyr can be painful. Showing those gift of love. People might make fun of you. They might even laugh at you. Now in Christendom, there was a book written about martyrs. In fact, after the Bible, it's considered one of the classics. Fox's Book of Martyrs. Written by John Fox way back in 1583. And Queen Elizabeth said that every church should have a copy of this and every house that can afford the book should have a copy of the book in their house because it tells about martyrs. And so I thought I'd let you read, hear a little bit about what the martyrs that John Fox talks about. Those initial apostles, the disciples, millions. Some of the things they went through for the faith. They were slain by the sword, some were burnt with fire, some were scourged with whips and stabbed, some had forks of iron fastened to them, they were put on crosses, they were drowned at sea, they had their skin plucked off and their tongues pulled out. Boy, some were stoned, some were frozen, some were starved, some had their hands cut off or dismembered or... Martyrs isn't probably what you think about but you're called to be witnesses to be able to show love of Christ to be able to be have people attack you but yet stand up for your faith you come here we all come here on Sundays and we confess we give witness to our faith we confess our faith when we say the words of Forgiveness at the beginning. When we sing songs, we're confessing our faith in those words of songs. When we 
say, the Apostles' Creed, we're confessing our faith. When we come to communion, we confess our faith. And so here is this nice, safe place to confess your faith. You're among brothers and sisters in Christ. What this is, is to build us up for when we go out into the world so that we have the strength to be witnesses. You see, you can't do it on your own. There is no way that any of us could confess our faith on our own. The only reason that we're able to is we hear in our gospel that Jesus promises you will be clothed with this power from on high. And so way back, 13 years ago or so, your parents brought you here to be clothed with power when you received the gift of baptism. You received the gift of the Holy Spirit. And so you have the Holy Spirit inside of you. Who's God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? You've got God inside of you? Wow. Talk about power. You've got awesome power. And so the only way that you can be a witness, a martyr, is to know that God is with you. And he'll give you the words or the actions to do. And he's there in all things. And he's with you when you're up there reading your faith statement. He's with you in all things and gives you that power. And knowing that God is with you, you get to ascend also to your heavenly home, just as Jesus did. We know that with God inside of us and being baptized and hearing his word, that we are children of God, that he loves us, and we have that relationship with him. Because Jesus did fulfill all things and has given us that awesome power of the Holy Spirit that we get to tell others about. Show them from our actions and the love that we have with them. When he ascended, it says at the end of Matthew 28, 20, Jesus says, I will be with you always. He said that in John 14 about how he will be with us always. He is always with us. God inside of us. So know that you are witnesses, but God is with you. Now we get the, the joy and excitement to hear some faith statements. So if the confirmation class wants to get up and move around... I truly believe that God sent his only son, Jesus, our Lord and Savior, to die on the cross for our sins, that it is through our faith that we receive eternal life and forgiveness of sins. God created both heaven and earth. Me and my family have always had a strong relationship with God, and we have all grown up with great faith. My parents and grandparents have really helped me grow my relationship with God and have brought me to church for as long as I can remember. During my time here at church, I have learned so many things about God and the Holy Spirit and how much he loves me. I've learned that he will always be by my side, no matter what, even in the dark times. The Bible verse that has stuck out to me the most for quite a while is Joshua chapter 1, verse 9. This Bible verse states, I've commanded you to be strong and brave. Don't ever be afraid or discouraged. I am the Lord your God, and I will be there to help you wherever you go. I love this verse because it reminds me that I'm never alone. God helped me through so many challenging times in my life and has shown me that I am loved. As we all know, there was a worldwide pandemic that started in 2020. This brought many challenging times to people around the world, including me. Throughout these rough times, however, I knew God was by my side through it all. Definitely the hardest part of this time was May of 2021, when my grandmother, who I was very close with, broke her hip and wasn't able to get better. She passed away later that year on December 3rd, 2021. She had great faith in God and was a great role model for me, and I learned a lot from her. She taught me how to grow my relationship with God and a lot more. She shared God's word with me, and I've made it a goal to pass it on by sharing God's word as much as I can. Although I miss her a lot, I know that it was a part of God's plan, and she's safe with him in heaven now. Since then, God has helped me get through her passing and has helped me heal from this. He was the light in the darkness. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins. Through him, we receive eternal life and total forgiveness of sins. 
God loved us so much that he sent his only son to die on the cross so that we would be saved from the devil and spend our eternal life in heaven with him. For whoever has faith in him will receive this. The Holy Spirit has given me faith and trust, and I will never stop believing and following God, and I will always love him. I will forever believe that he is my true Lord and Savior. God is our refugee and strength, an ever-present help and trust. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and, the foam, and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. The opening verses in Psalms 46 remind me that God is always with me, especially when I feel like I have nowhere to go or things are falling apart. All of us have times that are very hard and very personal to us. By relying on God and trusting to who he is, I've been able to get through the passing of my father when I was in second grade and my mother's battle with addiction. I believe in God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God created heaven and earth out of nothing. Everything and everyone that God created, God called good. God sent his one and only son, Jesus, to earth. While Jesus was on earth, he taught others about God and God's love. Jesus died on the cross to give us forgiveness for all the sins that we commit. When Jesus was resurrected, we received eternal life. When Jesus, Jesus brings us hope and he helps us feel God's love, he is our savior. I received the Holy Spirit during baptism. The Holy Spirit lives inside of me and helps me share God's love and love others. The Holy Spirit helps guide us in, de in the decisions we make and helps protect us and from the dangers and temptations of the world. He can fill us with hope, joy, kindness, love, faithfulness, gentleness, patience, and self-control. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for, our, for forgiveness of our sins. Three days later, he rose from the dead. When Jesus rose from the dead, he provided us with eternal life in the doorway of heaven. I believe that God has a plan for all of us and that everything that happens in life happens for a reason. By continuing to love and have faith in God, I am strengthening my relationship with him every day. I know that God is guiding me through life and has provided me with everything that I need. Who is God? That is the vital question that we confirmands, and me specifically, have been learning for not only the past three years, but truly since childhood. Ever since my baptism, I have learned about God and who he is. Now I can proudly exclaim that God is the Father, the creator of all things, the Son, both fully man and fully God, who died on the cross for our sins, and the Holy Spirit, who delivers faith into our hearts. The verse I chose is Psalms chapter 56, verse 4. It goes, In God, whose word I praise, in God I trust, I will not be afraid. What can mortal man do to me? This verse means to me, that God will always be by my side. It means that God will comfort my heart and mind, and it means that I can always find refuge in my all-loving, merciful, and gracious Heavenly Father. However, it does not mean that everything in my life will go perfectly and will be easy. Jesus specifically says that the Christian way of life will present challenges, but this verse does mean that God will help me through these challenges. It means that I trust God because I know that he has a plan for me, that even the difficult and painful parts of life all happen for a reason. By me living through God, people of this world can have no genuine negative effect or impact on me. <clears throat> Do not need to worry about or even recognize their judgment, for God is my one and only judge. This Bible verse and its meaning can be, in, can be implemented and found in my own life. Currently, it can prove to be a challenge to proclaim my faith in our condemnatory society. In my personal life, a hotbed of this derogatory temperament is found in school. Being in eighth grade provides its obvious struggles. I have to worry about my grades, my friends, my teachers, but predominantly, like any other eighth grader, I worry about what others think of me. And unfortunately, few kids in my school understand what it means to be a Christian. However, I do not need to worry what my peers think of me regarding my religion. Relating back to my verse, what can mortal man do to me? With God's help, 
I can be confident and proud to be a son of God and not be ashamed to follow him to share his word. Their judgment pales in comparison to that of our mighty God. Through God, I can serve as an example, as a luminary for everybody, not only in my school, but for everybody in my life. With God, I can become a leader. Being a leader is an amazing opportunity, gift, and blessing. I am fortunate to be blessed by God in so many other ways as well. God has provided me exactly what I need and more in life. I have been tangibly blessed in so many ways. I have a loving family, a nice house, always have food on the table, and I can walk, talk, and see. All of these gifts are from God. Not only has God given me these physical blessings, but he has so graciously provided me with the intangibles as well. I have been blessed with knowledge, determination, compatibility, and more. As I mentioned before, these blessings allow me to flourish in school and athletic situations. However, I know I can't take credit for any of that. I know that my God-given abilities allow me to excel in these areas. In closing, I want to take a moment to thank everybody who helped me on this journey. I want to thank Pastor Blaze, Mr. Zach, and Mr. Andrew for teaching me so much. I want to thank Mrs. Shirley and Mrs. Julie for always being so kind and helping, as well as my parents for helping me out so much. Ultimately, I want to thank Mr. George, my guide. He was with me for all three years. He really instilled a monumental outlook on Christianity. It really helped me to develop an amazing relationship with God. Finally, I want to take a moment to remember Tyler Hummel. He was a friend and a fellow confirmand. We shared years together in Sunday school, even before confirmation. I have many wonderful memories of him. I miss him, but I know that he's smiling down, proud of us all today. So as Jackson just talked about, we have 11 confirmands here today, but we started confirmation off three years ago with 12. And the 12th actually is now in glory in heaven. And that's Tyler Hummel. And it's important to the confirmands, it's important to us that we remember him during this time. Tyler had awesome faith. And this confirmation class was greatly different than any one that I've taught before. This is the 19th class that I've taught because of Tyler, because of the faith that he had, the faith he showed as he went through his cancer. And so we take this time to remember him and have him be a part of our ceremony as well. And we rejoice that he has ascended and that he is in his heavenly kingdom. I believe in God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I believe that Jesus died on the cross to wash away my sins so that I may have everlasting life in the kingdom of heaven. The verse I chose comes from the book of Philippians. It is chapter 4, verse 13. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. The verse proclaims that anything and everything you do is possible when it is done through Christ. And when it doesn't seem possible, then you will receive strength because Christ is with you. I hold this verse very close to my heart because its words remind me of the hard and difficult challenges I have been through in my life. The biggest problem I have dealt with for years now is anxiety. My anxiety has caused me to experience the biggest challenge I've ever gone through. On December 1st, 2022, I was diagnosed with an eating disorder. It was the worst and most destructive day of my life. Even though it was a horrible experience, it taught me a lot. When I put my struggles in Christ's hands, my efforts in life become stronger and easier as I live through Christ. As I went through treatment, I questioned a lot. I wondered if God was with me, helping me. I felt alone through the long process. God gave me a sign that he was with me through this long process I made. I, can, I made progress because I called him and asked for help. This experience has helped me to realize that I can turn to God when I'm feeling alone, and I can turn to him and remind myself he is there. 
As I left treatment and normalized my life again, I went back to things I love, like sports. I try to express my love of Christ to others by performing in my sports. I put so much effort and time into them. My success and failures show me how, Christ provi- how God provides me with the strength physically and mentally to continue to develop as a player and a teammate. Jesus is the light of my life, and when I'm in the darkness and cannot see, I will always find him and follow him on the path of righteousness to be safe with him in God's holy kingdom. Without my faith, I could not do things I love. God sees everyone in different ways. God requires of me love, love. God requires me to love him and to always have an open door for relationships with him. He has given me gifts that I can only display by following his requirements. I love my family and friends because of the relationships God has given me with them. I have joy in my life because of the relationships and activities and people God has granted me. I have patience with myself and others because of God. I express and receive kindness because of the relationships God has given me. I express and receive generosity because of the relationships God helped me build. I express gentleness and self-control because of the experience of relationships God has given me. And most of all, I have faithfulness in my friends, my family, and God. God is the most important relationship I uphold. The relationship I have with God is the foundation of my life and relationships with others. Putting up a wall against God will only make you weaker, not stronger. Inviting the Lord in my life and growing up with signs of God surrounding me always gives me a reminder that I always have someone to look to in times of need or when I feel helpless. My faith is important because it is a description of who I am as a Christian It shows how I cope and problem solve, and it is a reminder of what kind of person I am and what I follow. God is the creator, and Jesus is my savior, and without them, I don't know who I would be. I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sins so that I may have everlasting life in the kingdom of heaven. I confirm my baptism in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Webster's Dictionary defines faith as a belief and trust and loyalty to God. However, for me, it is an infinite belief, active trust, and unquestionable loyalty. Sure, we can believe that our favorite football team will win, but there's always a little doubt. They can trust that our government will make good decisions, but that trust wavers. And as for loyalty, it's not my loyalty to him, but his unquestionable loyalty to me. Even with all my mistakes, my regrets, and my sins, he came and died for me, yet I still doubt him. I've left him behind when times are tough. I've felt like I'm being punished when bad things happen versus being pulled to him. Even though I'm only 14, I've faced some challenges. My parents divorced when I was three. While I don't blame either of them, it left me wondering as I got older why God would allow my family to break apart. Last year, my Aunt Liz was diagnosed with cancer. It left me wondering why God might allow a family member to leave me. And then, just six months ago, one of my friends and fellow confirmand, Tyler Hummel, went to be with the Lord. It was hard. I couldn't understand why God would allow him to be taken from his friends and family who loved him so dearly. I had a hard time trying to figure out why God would let these things happen. But God has a specific path for each of us, and we walk that path by faith. It was through my faith, my belief, and trust in God that I have been able to follow his path for me at least most of the time. As a result of his path, my parents now have a better relationship than they did. My aunt is now cancer free. And even though Tyler is still gone, my faith helped me to realize that you shouldn't be sad that someone you cared about is gone, but rather be happy for the time that they were there with you. I pray that as I continue to grow in my faith, God will continue to guide me down the path he has chosen for me. Amen. Ever since I was born, I have been going to church. Throughout these years, as I attended church, my belief in the Lord has grown stronger. I believe that Jesus Christ has gotten me through the hardships in life and that he will continue to get me through these hardships as my faith in him continues to grow. One of these struggles include the way I see myself. Ever since I was old enough to care about my appearance, I've grown very insecure about my personality and my body. I know that Jesus is always there helping me through all these insecurities and creating a path for me. 
The Bible verse I chose comes from Samuel chapter 16, verse 7. In this verse, it states, But the Lord said to Samuel, Don't judge by his appearance or height, for I have rejected him. The Lord doesn't see things the way you see them. People judge by the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. I chose this Bible verse because it reminds me that God was the one who created me, and he created me just how he wanted me to look. It tells me that in life, even though I'm secure and self-conscious, it won't matter in heaven because God looks at our hearts. I believe that God is the Father, Jesus is the Son, and the giver of life is the Holy Spirit, who has given us everlasting life by dying on the cross for our sins and granting us forgiveness. For us, God sent his one and only Son to earth. Jesus performed miracles, taught people about God's love, and healed people while he was on earth. I trust that he is our Savior, and he created the earth and everyone on it. I trust that Jesus is Emmanuel because I know he is with me every step of every day and gets me through difficulties in my life. I know he will never leave my side and that he will continue to forgive us because he loves us so much that he even suffered a painful death by dying on the cross for us. I have faith that God wants a relationship with me so that he can provide me with everything that he has planned for me. Every day my relationship with God is growing because I know he is guiding me through each day. I know that if I continue to believe it, that Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins and rose again three days later, my relationship with him will improve and provide me with eternal life. I believe that the Holy Spirit can help us make decisions and defend us against threats to our safety. He is able to take away our worries and give us faith. And give us faith. The Holy Spirit fills us with love, patience, peace, and joy. I know that in order to save the sins of the innocent, Jesus went to hell and completely destroyed the entrance of hell and saved the people who were there and took them to heaven. This shows how much Jesus cares for us even though we are not perfect just like him. I believe, that God, I believe in God because he provides me with love and care, which gives me what I need to nourish and grow in this life and the next. This encourages me to spread the word of, the, word of God so that others can know him as well. I believe that Jesus Christ provides me with everything I need to get through my insecurities and doubt. He has given me all the people I know and love, such as my amazing family who loves me no matter what, and my uplifting friends that always support me whenever I need it, to strengthen me, help me, and give me opportunities to learn and go. Jesus Christ loves everyone unconditionally and never holds a grudge against us if we do not obey him. He gives us the chance to learn from this and still loves us. I believe in God the Father and that he is the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. My faith has helped me a lot. It has helped me through school, friends, and sports. One way that has helped make it easy for me to make good decisions is the Holy Spirit inside of me. Jesus and his love for me to follow. Romans chapter 10 verse 9 as my Bible verse because it has always spoken to me and stuck out to me. It is a way of telling me that you can make mistakes and not be perfect to go to heaven. All you must do is believe. The person I am thankful for is Coach Q. He is not just another coach. He is much more than that. Through the six years I have known him, he has made me a stronger and better person. He always pushes me to my fullest potential, listens to me, and is also walking by my side. Another person I am thankful for is Miss Julie. Miss Julie is my confirmation guide. She always listens to me, gives me advice, and is always there when I need her to be. She has made me grow into a better person and grow more, into, grow more in my faith. She has made me have a whole different look and feeling about my faith. I am also thankful for everyone who has walked beside me in my life. One struggle in my life that, has, that God helped me through is my ADHD and phonological awareness. This was a struggle for me because, I was, because before I was diagnosed, I always thought I wasn't smart enough or good enough. Once I was diagnosed, I knew that I wasn't able to help myself on my own, so I looked for God. I looked to God to help me get the help and resources I needed to be successful even with my disabilities. I know that I would not be where I was today if it wasn't for God. I believe that God, I believe that Jesus died on the cross for our sins and rose on the third day. When he died on the cross for, for our sins, that gave us eternal life and that we are forgiven. I believe in I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe that God is three and one. I believe that he is the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I believe that God has sculptured me in his own image and has created every hair on my head and every crease in my face. 
I believe that God makes no mistakes and has created every fish in the sea and every bird in the sky. I believe that God is the maker of everything and more. I believe that God sent down his one and only son, Jesus, to die on the cross for our sins. I believe that Jesus has nailed, was nailed to a 200-pound cross that he had to carry and had thorns placed on his head and was whipped 39 times, and he did it just because he loves us. I believe that Jesus waits with open arms for us to go to. Jesus loves us and wants us to take and wants to take our pain away. Jesus gives me the love in my heart and kindness in my soul. I believe that Jesus has been there with me through every laugh and every tear. Jesus has always been with me since my baptism and my new life. Jesus taught me right from wrong. I believe that the Holy Spirit is my guide and giver. I believe that the Holy Spirit has given me eyes to see every twinkle in the stars and see every color in the flowers. I believe that God, I believe that the Holy Spirit has given me my favorite people to love and animals to adore. I believe that the Holy Spirit has given me arms to hug with and legs to run, jump, and play soccer with. I believe that the Holy Spirit has guided me through life and has protected me from every evil. I believe that the Holy Spirit has given me my favorite things like music to listen to and fruit to eat. I hope to shine Jesus' kindness through me, and so people have no doubt that I am the daughter of the greatest and never-failing love. I know that God is my creator, Jesus is my sacrifice and teacher, and the Holy Spirit is my guide and giver. This is most certainly true. I haven't always had a strong relationship with the Lord. Ever since I was little, I grew up around churches not knowing what they were for. I could never comprehend what the Bible or Jesus even was. Ever since last year, when I met my best friend Sarah, she has helped me learn and grow my faith in Jesus. Now I believe he is the one true Holy Spirit, Son, Father, and Savior. I believe he was born of the Virgin Mary, Son of the Father Almighty, and died under Pontius Pilate to rise again for everyone's sins. I believe he has forgiven anything anyone will ever do until he comes back. I believe everything I love and own comes from my Savior. Without him, I wouldn't have my amazing family and uplifting friends. I spread the Lord's word through my friends at school and younger family members so they know the word of the Lord. The Lord knows not to shine his light on the people, but to shine inside for his followers. The verse I chose was Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 to 16. You are the light of the world. A town on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light the lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine on others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. This verse is special to me because it means to not hide away if you love or worship God, but to stand on the highest hill or shine the brightest light of your faith towards others so Jesus can see what you are doing as he is in heaven. Overall, believing in God has made me feel enchanted on what can be done in this world. I know the devil will make me feel unwanted, unloved, and unforgiven. Believing in the devil will leave treacherous scars on many people. I know to stay optimistic and spread my faith in the Lord, my Savior. This past year has helped me strengthen my relationship with the Lord in many difficult ways. So how about if we give a round of applause for these wonderful confirmation students? These persons have been instructed in the Christian faith and desire to make public affirmation of their baptism. Madison Jean Brennan. <laughs> Mackenzie Elizabeth Bruns Jackson Guyler DeNicolo Tegan Maying Howe And of course we remember Tyler Joseph Hummel in loving memory Caitlin Ann Caston, 
Benjamin Edward Mullenkamp, Ryan Mitchell Opart, Sarah Elizabeth Sayers, Kelsey Rose Selhammer, Kayla Lynn Tolson, and Delaney Alexis Walton. Dear friends, we rejoice that you now desire to make profession of your faith and assume greater responsibility in the life of our Christian community and its mission in the world. In holy baptism, our Lord Jesus Christ received you and made you members of the church. In the community of God's people, you have learned from his word, God's loving purpose for you, and all of creation. You have been nourished at his holy table and called to be witnesses to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, therefore, I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church, the faith into which you were baptized. Do you renounce all the forces of evil, the devil, and all his empty promises? Do you believe in God the Father? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, Holy Church, Holy Spirit, for the of sins, for the of the rest, for the of the rest. Amen. Let us pray. We pray for those who are affirming their baptism and for all that they may be redeemed from all evil and rescued from the way of sin and death. Lord, in your mercy. That the Holy Spirit may open their hearts to your grace and truth. Lord, in your mercy. That they may be kept in the faith and the communion of your holy church. Lord, in your mercy. That they may be sent into the world in witness to your love. Lord, in your mercy that they may be brought to the fullness of peace and glory, Lord, in your mercy. We remember before you also at this time, O God of comfort, all of our ill, our shut-ins, and those with special anxieties, needs, and cares, particularly Wendy Brennan, that you would hold them in your gracious keeping, Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You have made public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant of God made with you in holy baptism, to live amongst God's faithful people, to hear his word and share in his supper, to proclaim, witness, be a martyr, martyr, for the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of our Lord Jesus Christ and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. Madison. I do, and I also do. Mackenzie. Yes. Jackson. Yes. Tegan. Caitlin. I do, and I ask God to help me. Ben. Ryan, Sarah, Kelsey, Kayla, Delaney. Let us pray. Gracious God, through water and the Spirit, you have made these young people your own. You have forgiven them all of their sins and brought them to the newness of life. Continue to strengthen them with your Holy Spirit and daily increase in them your gifts of grace, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence through Jesus Christ. Amen.
you may be seated other than Madison. So if Madison's family and friends could come on up. Unfortunately, Madison's mom had a stroke last week, and she is in the hospital, so she can't be with us, but she can hear it online. And Madison's Bible verse was, I've commended you to be strong and brave. Don't ever be afraid or discouraged. I am the Lord your God, and I will be there to help you wherever you go. From Joshua 1, 9. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Madison the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm her faith Guide her life, empower her in her serving, and give her patience in suffering. Amen. Mackenzie. Mackenzie's family wants to come up. Kenzie's Bible verse was, God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, through its waters roar from foam and the mountains quake with their surging. From Psalm 46, 1-3. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, Stir up in Mackenzie the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm her faith. Guide her life. Empower her in her serving. And give her patience in suffering. Amen. And if Jackson would come up in Jackson's family. Jackson's Bible verse, in God whose word I praise, in God I trust, I will not be afraid. What can mortal men do to me? Anybody want to reach in and put a hand on him? Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Jackson the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm his faith. Guide his life, empower him in his serving, and give him patience in his suffering. Amen. Tegan? And Tegan's Bible verse is, don't worry about tomorrow. It'll take care of itself. You have enough to worry about today. Hand on her. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Tegan the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm her faith. Guide her life. Empower her in her serving. And give her patience in suffering. Amen. There you go, Miss Tegan. And Caitlin. Caitlin's Bible verse comes from Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Caitlin the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm her faith. Guide her life. Empower her in her serving. And give her patience in suffering. Amen. Ben, Ben's family and friends could come up. And Ben's Bible verse, for we walk by faith, not by sight, from 2 Corinthians 5, 7. 
And if you all want to put a hand on Ben. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Ben the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm his faith. Guide his life. Empower him in his serving. And give him patience in suffering. Amen. And Ryan. Ryan's Bible verse is, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. From Psalm 118.1. Gather around and put a hand on him. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Ryan the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm his faith. Guide his life. Empower him in serving and give him patience in suffering. Amen. Sarah. And Sarah's Bible verse was, But the Lord said to Samuel, Don't judge by his appearance or height, for I have rejected him. The Lord doesn't see things the way you see them. People judge by outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. From 1 Samuel 16, 7. Anybody in here? Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Sarah the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm her faith. Guide her life. Empower her in serving and give her patience in suffering. Amen. Kelsey. And Kelsey's Bible verse is, So you will be saved if you honestly say Jesus is Lord, and if you believe with all of your heart that God raised him from the dead. Have you reach in there and put a hand on her? Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, Stir up in Kelsey the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm her faith. Guide her in life. Empower her in her serving. And give her patience in suffering. Amen. And Kayla... Kayla's Bible verse is, You have looked deep into my heart, Lord, and you know all about me. You know when I am resting or when I am working. And from heaven you discovered my thoughts. From Psalm 139, 1 to 2. Come on, guys. You've been through this. Put it through. <laughs> Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Kayla the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm her faith. Guide her life. Empower her in serving. And give her patience in suffering. Amen. And last, but certainly not least, Delaney. Delaney's Bible verse is, Are you the light of the world? A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, 
that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father who is in heaven. From Matthew 5, 14, 16. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Delaney the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm her faith. Guide her life. Empower her in serving. And give her patience in suffering. Amen. We prepare now for the service of the sacrament. I invite you to rise. And let us pray. Blessed are you, ascended Lord, for you continue to be with us in your word and sacraments, reminding us of your never-ending presence and the promise of your return. We give thanks for your presence in this meal of bread and wine as you give us your body and blood to grant us forgiveness, life, and salvation. Empower us by your spirit as we joyfully await your return. To you alone, ascended Father, Lord, ascended Lord, be all glory, honor, and worship for you rule with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood shed for you for the remission of your sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. And we believe this truly is the very body, the very blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And if you believe that too, we welcome you to join us at our Lord's table. Amen.
And now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in the true faith until life everlasting depart in peace. And we join together in the prayer our Lord Jesus has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Pastor Blaze, our next steps. So our next steps, go and be witnesses. You don't have to endure the hardships of the martyrs in here because we live in such a wonderful land. But we go and do like Mackenzie had in her faith statements. We be fruitful. We show love and joy and peace and patience and goodness and kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control so that others will see Christ and know that they have the ability to be in a loving relationship with a God that loves them and the gift of eternal life. Amen. Receive now the benediction of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you his peace. Amen. There's got to be more than going back and forth from doing right and doing wrong. So we were tough, that's who we are. Come on, get in line right behind me. You along with everybody, thinking this worth and what you do. Then like a hero who takes the stage when we're on the edge of a sea, saying it's too late. Let me introduce you to amazing grace. No matter the bumps, no matter the bruises, no matter the scars, still the truth is the cross has made. Cross has made you flawless. And no matter the hurt or how deep the wound is, no matter the pain, still the truth is the cross has made, the cross has made you flawless. Couldn't possibly be, we simply can't believe. That this unconditional kind of love would be enough to Take a filthy wretch like this Wrapping up in righteousness That's exactly what he did Yeah, no matter the bumps No matter the bruises No matter the scars Still the truth is the cross has made The cross has made you flawless no matter the hurt or how deep the wound is, no matter the pain, still the truth is the cross has made, the cross has made you flawless. Whoa. And like a hero who takes the stage when we're on the edge of a seat saying it's too late let me introduce you to grace grace god's grace no matter the bumps no matter the bruises no matter the scars still the truth is the cross has made Cross has made you flawless. 
no matter the hurt or how deep the wound is, no matter the pain, still the truth is the cross has made, cross has made you flawless. No matter what they say or what you think they are, the day you called his name, he made you flawless. He made you flawless. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. No matter the boss, no matter the who says, no matter the scar, still the truth is the cross has made. The cross has made you flawless And no matter the hurt Or how deep the wound is No matter the pain It's still the truth is The cross has made The cross has made you flawless yeah. No matter what they say Or what you think you are The day you called his name he made you flawless. He made.